Welcome back. This is the Clay Golem and we are back in Foundry VTT and we're continuing with building Fandelva and below the Shattered Obelisk. Um, in the previous video, we completed effectively completed chapter two. Um, so we've got all of that sorted and we created our chapter three folder on the right hand side here. Um, but we haven't done anything else. So we're going to start by creating some scenes in here for these other encounters that generally the characters are wandering around doing a few odd jobs, a few side quests for bonus treasure and trying to find the location of Cragmore Castle. Uh, so one of these areas is the Old Owl Well. So that's the one we're going to build today. Uh, and it's going to be in this folder, Chapter 3. Let's stick that in there. Uh, and I need to oh, I need to immediately find the map for that. So I want to go into my maps folder here and I'm going to choose a file and upload it uh, not in there uh, here it is so open this one up select that file and bring that in now I obviously I can update all those things before I do it but I prefer to change scene to see what I'm looking at before I do anything else partly so you know you can see what's going on okay to configure this uh, it's called the old owl well um, I have no problem with it being called Old Owl Well because the players will know they will only come here if they're deliberately trying to come to Old Owl Well. So that's fine. Got my background image. Don't need to change any of those things. That's all fine. Uh, grid. So we can see we've got a grid on here. Owls does not align. So let's uh, sort the grid out. That's the first thing I want to do. Yes, please. Uh, if I just zoom in here, you can probably see we've got a fainter grid which is the Foundry VTT, and then we've got this bigger grid, which is the one on the map. So we just need to align those. You've seen me do this before. Um, if you haven't, you can go back to the Stormwreck Isle um, initial ones. Um, if you're particularly interested in this process, you want to see how it's done in a bit more detail. Um, but at this point, I just want to get this sorted. Uh, da, 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 da. So we just zoom, basically all we're doing, we're zooming the map in the background to make sure the map aligns the same size as our grid. Nearly there. Close, not quite. This is not a very exciting bit to watch. Um, right, so we're aligned here in the middle, but we're not aligned over here, and we're not aligned down there, so I need to shrink it even more. Maybe 0.89. Perfect match here. Um, not perfect match down here. Which way have I gone? Have I gone too big, too small? I need to make it smaller still. What about that? It's a bit fiddly this. Takes a bit of time. Now I've gone too much the other way, of course. Uh, need to <laughs> little bit... Uh, a little bit finagly trying to get this done. Looks like I've gone way too much now. That's so annoying. Okay, that's pretty close. Uh, we can see my map probably needs to come down uh, slightly more. Almost there. Oh, is it almost there? No, these are slightly too small. I think that's about as close as we're going to get it. One more. That's about as close as we're going to get it. And you know what? It's bloody good enough. That will do, that will do for us. Okay. Save those changes. Right. So we've got our grid. That's all good. So now when we dump things onto here, they should align very nicely. Um, all right. Anything else we need to do on here? Padding percentage, etc. We don't really need to worry about. That's all fine. Lighting wise. Okay. Token vision. Yes. Fog exploration. Um, I don't need to have it on on this. Um, doesn't really make much difference. I think I'll turn it off. It's an outdoor area. Don't need fog of war images then. Do I want global illumination? I will say yes because it's outside. So you know, if they're outside, they're going to be able to see it because of daylight. Uh, and any ambiance we want. Um, we've got playlists, set lists, playlists and things we've not really played with, um, you know, for background music and stuff. Mostly because using background music, um, you've got copyright issues, so I haven't really looked at those. 
Uh, let's stick some rain on here. It's in the hills. That will do nicely. There we go. It's going to be raining. All right. Um, good. Happy with that. Uh, what's slightly annoying, if you look up here, where our grid's not slightly aligned, it's we can see both grids. So I do want to go back to grid, and I just want to make the foundry grid invisible. There we go. So it, it doesn't look problematic. Okay, excellent. So we've got our map set up. Now in the other, um, in the other screen, I've got the module open. Uh, and we've got, there's not too much to do on this one. We do need to add our main character on here, our main, you know, I was going to say bad guy. He is a bad guy, but not necessarily. Our main NPC. Uh, so I have created this person already. So this is, um, what's his name? Haman, uh, Haman Kost, the Red Wizard of Thay. So I've created him just as an NPC. He's not a full character, not like we did with Lano Glassstaff. Um, or, or Neznar. Um, you really don't want the players fighting him uh, unless they are ready for a proper fight. So I've just thrown him together with his stats and things. He's got his dagger, he's got his spells, so he is ready to rock and roll if necessary. But again, you know, players really don't want to be messing with him. Now he's going to be inside his tent. So I'm going to pop him in there uh, and I am going to just hide his token initially. Okay. So he is busy studying away. There's not a lot else to go with this. So just quickly read what it says in the module about this. Um, so this place was built thousands of years ago. Long vanquished empire. It's now a ruined watchtower. So this is the tower, obviously, in the top right there. Along with the adjoining building. Um, that consists of little more than a few crumbling walls. And the broken stump of the tower itself. Which is absolutely fine. Old our well lies beneath, uh, tells me where it is, yeah we know that. Uh, recently prospectors in the air have noted that someone has set up a campsite at Old our well and that the undead guardians have been posted to keep intruders out, blah blah blah. Um, just talks about them coming here and it talks about the fact there's 12 zombies inside the crumbled shell of the old watchtower um, and can't be seen from outside. However, any character who succeeds on a wisdom perception check can smell them. Um, and that's pretty much it. This is pretty much a, a fight or, or conversation type of encounter, this one. Really quite straightforward. So let me go to my monsters and let me get my zombies. And we're just going to be chucking out 12 zombies. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Um, there we go. So we've got our zombies. We've got our NPC. That's all good. Now, what about walls? Do I want to put any walls in here? The answer is I probably do. Um, because while this is a ruined tower, it's not completely devoid of... Um, oops. It's not completely devoid of do it. Ah, <laughs> uh, having trouble with walls. I haven't done walls for a little while and I forgot that it's control. I want to do the continuous wall, not shift. Come on. Now you can see some of these are not exactly landing in the place where I might want them to and that is because um, it does snap to grid so I'm not getting a nice circular pattern here but that's okay because holding down shift don't want to move the whole lot thank you stop it holding down shift when I've got one of these nodes selected allows me to place it exactly where I want it I've got to stop holding on to shift haven't I thank you So I can move that one in a bit, grab it, hold shift, drop it exactly where I want it, just so I can straighten up these walls a little bit, or rather curve these walls a little bit. Is this necessary? No. Am I being a bit pedantic? Probably. Okay, that will do. So we've got a wall there. 
Um, what I'm also going to do is going to put a wall here. Hello, do wall, thank you. I'm also going to do a wall here just to make sure the characters are not immediately being able to see inside the tent um, with this being the door at the front and having done that actually it means I can make him visible because they won't be able to see him unless they are looking in there. Uh, what about the well here? Um, yeah we can put we can put a small wall around the well just to make it clear there we go and I want to select all of these ones double left click do I want it to restrict movement uh, yes do I want it to block light no do I want it to block sight no or sound no so it's really just to stop them moving through that square um, with you know like that so those basically they can see through now what about these outside walls we've got these zombies who are kind of I think what I'm going to do with these zombies that are standing or crouching amongst the rocks because they're kind of on guard is I am going to make those invisible so they're not immediately noticeable um, and then when the characters come up if they come up through the main path here as they come into view um, they might see them um, that makes sense to do that these unless I want to make these walls high enough they're ruins aren't they I'm yeah let's not let's not bother with hiding them sorry changing my mind just trying to work out how I want to run this one I am going to put these walls in they're going to be broken walls of course but I am going to put them in so depending where the players choose to come in from they may or may not see the zombies before the zombies see them. And of course you may choose to run this adventure slightly, uh, this um, encounter slightly differently. I'm expecting my players to immediately get into a fight uh, <laughs> uh, and then immediately cease when they realize that a non-aggressive human is here and there to be some ethical debate around the use of zombies um, and just see how the players react to that now anybody who realizes that actually this chap is a red wizard of Thay may take pause for thought and decide that negotiation is better than combat so if we take a look at him just as a reminder he he's actually quite powerful so we might only have 40 hit points, but check his spell book. It's got Cone of Cold, Ice Storm, Fireball. I mean, he's nasty to mess with. I mean, he really is going to mess up the party big time if they choose to fight with him. So that's obviously not their best move to do that with. Now, I would have it that if uh, he's here just researching to start with, I would possibly say that his first round of combat is going to be um, doing things like, um, you know, casting his mage armor. If it depends on the party, if the party come here and they're all pretty tough and everything, he's going to have his mage armor already on. Um, if not, if they are a little bit weaker when they get here, then I will probably use his first round just to give them a slight advantage over him. He's going to use that first round to cast his own mage armor on it. But if he looks like he's going to be overwhelmed, he's got greater invisibility, he has got fly, he's got suggestion. So he's got some good ways of getting out of here um, and escaping from them. He's also got a nice handy counter spell just to make them really realise how powerful he is um, before he brings out Cone of Cold and Ice Storm. Um, and hopefully the players will realise they're outmatched and they will back off if not he will retreat if it looks like he's going badly but there's very very good chance of a total party kill here if you're not careful with this chap you know cone of cold he could get most of the party in one go ice storm he could get most of the party in one go um yeah <laughs> a lesson may well be learned i'm going to leave these zombies in the tower just kind of mooching about i think i'm going to have these kind of they're basically leaning up against the walls of the tower or collapsed on the floor crouching 
um, because I've put these walls in again it's just going to make them all visible um, and that's pretty much it that's all I need to do I don't think I need to add any um, I don't think I need to add any more walls I don't think I need to add any particular uh, sounds to this one um, yeah I could but I don't see it's going to add anything to this particular encounter it's a very simplistic um, you got you know you either go in diplomacy or it's going to be a battle uh, that's kind of it and of course he does have a side quest um, as well if the players actually do decide to discuss so uh, the marauders at Wyvern Tor he directs them towards Wyvern Tor to go and deal with that one um, or to go and deal with Agatha, Agatha the Banshee now of course They've already got a mission, potentially already got a mission from Sister Garrily to go and see Agatha the Banshee. So they could actually achieve two objectives in one go if they decide to do that. Now, in my experience, when they go to Agatha, they have the one gift for Agatha and Agatha will exchange it for the answer to one question. So there's usually the question that Sister Garrily wants answered about the, um, the spellbook Bow Gentle. Um, and the players turn up going, well, hang on a minute, they want to know where Cragmore Castle is. So they have their own question that they want to ask. And if they come to Old Alwell first and don't get into a battle, um, they have the quest from this one, which is about who built the tower. So they end up going there with three different questions and only one gift, um, unless they can produce another gift from somewhere else. So they, it's, it's, it's quite an interesting encounter if they do that after they've got these other bits to do um, and again becomes negotiation it's a little bit like this one if they choose to fight they could be in serious trouble um, but we don't want our players to just try and fight everything there's other ways to solve problems all right i think this one is done really really easy we've got old our well that's completed we can run that bosh job done that's it for this one bit of a short one see ya and you thought you got rid of me, didn't you? Um, it was a slightly premature ending uh, ending this encounter. One thing I forgot to do. I forgot to do loot, didn't I? You know, quite important. Um, so thankfully I managed to remember that as soon as I stopped recording the previous bit. Um, do want to add that on to how we're going to do loot for this. Because uh, this chappy here does indeed have some pretty good loot. Uh, scroll, potion of healing, some gemstones... Um, and some coinage as well. Now, of course, we can put them on his person. Um, the only thing he's carrying is his dagger. But rather than doing that, because let's face it, you know, he's not going to be carrying everything with him on his person all the time. So I've done this as a loot. Um, so I've done this as a, as a proper little loot box. So what I did is I have used our default item pile. I have cloned that to create, uh, just open this up, Hamun's chest or Hammond's chest I've double clicked it so I've got it twice uh, and what I've done is I've added his coins onto here by using the add currency button uh, and then I have dragged through from the SRD his potion of healing the spell darkness which automatically creates a scroll for it and I created a under my items here I just cloned one of my other gems called it a gate uh, and added five of those on as well. So I've chucked that in there. Um, and because this is a loot pile, just under the configure pile settings, I've got this enabled interact distance, interaction distance one. So they have to be next to it to loot it. Yes, they can look at the stuff in there. Um, no problem. In this case, once they've looted it, I do want it to delete the pile because there's nothing in it. It's not a pile anymore, is it? Um, so I'm going to get them to do that. Um, under other settings, I've got this set as an item pile. Uh, display, display a single image item. Yeah, whatever. Use item name. Probably don't need. Um, update. And there it is. It's just hovering there. Now, it says small chest when I hover over it. Nobody else can see that. Only the game master. So all of that stuff is in there. So if the players do somehow overcome this chap, um, Hammond, uh, and decide to loot his tent. Now, bearing in mind, as I said only a few minutes ago uh, he's quite a tough cookie and then he's also got these 12 zombies so they're gonna have to deal with all of those um how would i play this they're, those zombies are under direct control they're going to follow the last command they received so if they manage to somehow incapacitate hammond 
before he has got the zombies to attack them, um, then brilliant. Now, these zombies are currently their orders are going to be to attack intruders. Anything that comes within the walls, they are going to attack. So they will carry on attacking until he stops them. But it's possible he stops them to parlay and then they wipe him out or at least incapacitate him before he orders the zombies to continue their attack. In which case, it's possible that they can get to that chest, loot it, and the zombies are just going to stand around for the rest of eternity doing nothing. Uh, and actually, the players could dispatch them one at a time. They're not really going to... They're going to defend themselves, but not defend each other. Um, so that might, might be a really nice way to show that necromancers in full control over these. Um, but if they kill him and they're under, a, they're already attacking, they will just continue to do that and will pursue the characters potentially forever, because that was the last order they were given. So yeah, we have this loot chest here, so that should mean that the players can just walk up to here. When they're next to it, they can open it, they can see the stuff, and they can yoink out what they want from there. Um, and of course, they can, if they want to, split currency and just divvy it up. So I just thought I'd add that on to, to uh, just clarify the completion of this. Uh, and because that chest is within the tent, um, which is got walls and things, they can't actually see it until they go in through the door, or at least are at an angle where they can see in that tent. I'm done now, promise. See you in the next one.